like your fingerprint or your retinal scan or something like that. Password don'ts. Uh, you don't want to use any words found in the dictionary. You don't want to use any words found in the dictionary written backwards. Uh, you don't want to use any words that are proper nouns or words in a foreign language because foreign language dictionaries exist also. Uh, past phrases are more easily remembered than much more, and much more difficult to crack. A past phrase, for example, is you may remember the phrase I want chips and I want them now. And so your password becomes the first letters of each of those words. Um, now, if you replace some of the letters with special characters, like every time you have the letter I, you use a one, or every other time you would use a one. Uh, here, instead of using the A, we use an at sign. Uh, now you have a passphrase that's not found in any dictionary or foreign language. Um, and as long as it's 12 characters or longer, it will become very difficult to crack, especially since you have these special characters. And then it's something that's easy for you to remember because you can remember the original passphrase and reconstruct the password if you need to. Uh, tokens are one-time passwords that a user types or inserts into the computer uh, after they've entered their passphrase. Uh, token is synchronous, which means it automatically synchronizes with the authentication service. Uh, asynchronous ones use a challenge response scheme to synchronize uh, and then reset themselves after they're used. Uh, biometrics, as we've mentioned, is something like a fingerprint, a palm scan, an iris scan, voice prints, um, face image recognition scans. Uh, when we talk about two- and three-factor authentication, what we mean is two-factor authentication is when you're using two of those methods, say, for instance, a password and a fingerprint. Three-factor authentication is particularly difficult to break. Uh, that would be using three different things, say, a password, um, a facial scan, and... and uh, uh, fingerprint. In review here then, authentication controls are something you know, something you have, something you are, and then we have to be very careful about the way we construct and use passwords in the system. Uh, pass phrases help, tokens can help, biometrics can help. And then going with two and three factor authentication, um, will considerably inc increase uh, access control security uh, to your systems. All right, now that you've uh, taken a look at the um, contents and concerns of domain number six, let's take a look at the manager's audit questions for domain number six. The first one is, do we use two-factor or three-factor authentication? Um, if we don't, should we be doing so? Again, it's not necessarily a requirement that you're using two- and three-factor authentication. It's a requirement that you have a discussion about whether or not you should be using it and that your rationale for not using two- and three-factor authentication, if you're not, is documented someplace. Okay, number two, how often do we change our passwords? Again, um, Best practices would suggest that you change them at least every 30 days. Um, so how often do we do that? Number three, do we, do we routinely search employee work areas for passwords that have been written down and posted, um, either in obvious places like taped on the monitor or in what users often consider to be less obvious places, but they're the first place somebody would look, such as underneath the keyboard, or underneath the monitor, or inside, uh, taped inside the top desk drawer? Um, are we doing surveys of our employees' work areas to ensure that they're not writing these passwords down and thereby um, potentially compromising security to our system? Question number four in the manager's audit. Do all our passwords have at least eight characters, cannot be found in any dictionary, contain both upper and lowercase characters as well as numeric 
and other special characters? Well, they should. Um, are, we, are we trying to guarantee that they are, um, that they're conforming to this? Number five, who manages user passwords and how is access to the password management facility restricted? Um, again, it doesn't do us a lot of good if we have uh, all of the company's passwords logged in a database someplace that's easy for some smart person to get at. Okay, what is our access control policy? Does it enforce the principle of least privilege? Again, that means only those who need to know, who have a need to know, can access a particular information resource. So what you're looking for here would be an access control policy that says, okay, you only have access to the following five information resource facilities because that's all you need to know to do your job. Um, the person in the, in the workstation next to you uh, because they've got a different job and different responsibilities, may need to have access to seven information resources, um, six of which are different than the ones that you get to look at. Uh, have we thought our way through which information resources each of our employees needs to have access to, and are, are we restricting their access just to those information resources? Now we get to domain number seven. Law, Investigation, and Ethics. The seventh domain discusses the laws governing corporations' information security, the investigation of information security crimes, and the ethical issues of information security. So we'll focus on laws pertaining to the financial industry here, investigations, uh, which is evidence and definitions, and uh, then code of ethics provided by ISC squared. Laws pertaining to you, well, it depends on what type of industry you're in. Um, so, for instance, if you're in the financial industry, you've got the Privacy Act of 74 to deal with, uh, the Security Act of 87, uh, the Federal Information Security Act of 2002, Graham Leach Bliley, which is uh, particular to the finance industry, Sarbanes-Oxley is... Uh, applicable to any public uh, corporation, and then uh, the FTC Act. <clears throat> the Privacy Act of 74 addresses security records, uh, both physical and technical, and it talks about the confidentiality of those records, both physical and technical. The Act does not address the approach to take uh, for securing these. It leaves that up to the user. It just specifies that you have to do that. The Security Act of 87 addresses documentation, risk-based analysis, external auditing on an annual basis, and security awareness training. Um, the Federal Information Security Act of 2002 <clears throat> addresses several of these uh, items, um, and then also plans for securing information, both physical and technical, incidents response procedures, and disaster recovery procedures. Graham Leach Bliley um, addresses documentation, risk-based analysis, third-party oversight, uh, administrative, technical, and physical controls, security awareness and training. And I think everybody knows what Sarbanes-Oxley does for a living, so we won't go into that. The FTC Act addresses management involvement, designated program coordinators, risk-based analysis, um, security awareness training, information controls, etc. So depending on the type of industry that you're in depends on which laws may apply. Uh, and for some of these, we, we didn't mention healthcare here. HIPAA, for instance, would be uh, significant um, in, in anybody in the healthcare industry. Um, when we talk about laws, investigation, and ethics, we, of course, have to deal with investigations. This means we have to have some understanding of evidence definitions. Um, best evidence are such things as contracts. Secondary evidence are such things as witness testimony and copies of original documents.